very convicted set of songs for me. Um, there is a great deal of concern about this as being the oppression of dissent, and we agree that there are serious concerns here. One of the big issues for us has been the use of the Terrorism Suppression Act. We opposed the legislation when it was put to Parliament. We opposed and fought against the amendments that were due to be debated in Parliament this week, but were taken off the order paper. And instead of the, ter the Terrorism Suppression Amendment Bill being debated, they debated the repeal of seditious offences um, bill instead. So there's obviously, in my view, a backtracking by government um, on the issue in terms of supporting the police. And I think that there's real issues here about the police losing both the media war and um, the public support for what they're doing. As more and more information comes out, it becomes clearer and clearer that there are um, other agendas here by the police and the public just simply won't put up with it. The real big concern has been, as others have said, the smearing of uh, activists, um, peace activists, a variety of activism um, by the use of the Terrorism Suppression Act, even though it actually hasn't been used yet, it was just cited on um, the, the, um, the warrants. But what this really is, I think, in, in large part, is about the econ economic development activists who are engaged with marginal communities are the ones that are being targeted. At the moment, it's clear it's Māori activists and all Māori communities, but there's also real concerns for immigrant communities and for working class communities who are engaging in those kinds of the same kinds of activities about developing um, the economic independence of communities to take care of themselves. But we've seen it smeared across peace activists, environmentalists. We've even had um, new street bread makers smeared. Swedish bankers have been smeared. The net is very wide. One thing that is also quite obvious is that this is less about the government's agenda and more about the police's own political agenda. The police have taken these actions um, to a large extent, excluding the local bobbies who are involved with these communities. You can see the police in those communities, the Fatani police, for example, are coming out and really backing away because this is not an action that they would have wanted to see in their own communities either. So this is a small group within the police uh, talking with themselves, uh, building themselves up and losing control. And I think it's quite right looking at what Ross Morant has been saying about that. Um, when he talked about how really they're just talking with each other, they have no capacity to make a rational assessment of the information that they gather. They work themselves up into a frenzy. It's the nature of their culture, and therefore they must take these actions that are about the invasion of citizens, um, the persecution of New Zealand citizens, and we are entitled to be free from that persecution from our, um, our police forces and our armed forces. So I think that this is, this is a significant time for the New Zealand community as a whole, um, the activist community, but the general community as well, to be taking action and saying this police action from this, what could be quite a small group of um, police have just lost control, um, is not acceptable here. We're part today of protest action that's happening across the country. There's more in Christchurch. I know my colleague Peter Locke is speaking um, in the north, as well as the protest action that has been happening over the last week, and it will continue to be like that. We will continue to speak out until we get the police um, controlled and until they become truly our servants and protecting us and protecting our democratic rights to free speech, to be active, to be politically engaged, and to critique and to provide dissent if we choose to. So thank you very much. Kilda.